guys, it's Flower Gothic. You ready for a video where I ramble about my gender? So, I am non-binary, as you can see in the title below. And I know I've mentioned that a number of times on this very channel, but I never thought about making a video specifically devoted to it. I decided that I might as well make something that I guess explains how I discovered that I was non-binary and my history with gender in general. <laughs> and I guess it's cathartic for me to finally release all these memories that I've kept hidden for so so long and if even one person gets more informed or realizes something about themselves because of this video, it will have been worth it. So, I am non-binary, but not trans. I am rather comfortable with the body I'm in. I might, you know, get a breast reduction one day because I have double D's, apparently. <laughs> but I don't want to do anything major. I don't want to go on hormone therapy or anything. And I still keep my name and use feminine pronouns along with gender neutral ones. My journey is definitely different from other people who identify as non-binary. Other people may use no pronouns at all. Other people may solely use they them pronouns. And that is equally valid. Everyone goes through their own journey and everyone makes their own decisions. I say that my childhood was relatively normal. I spent the first 12 years of my life in small homes that were full of love, and I grew up middle class. I loved Disney princesses, especially Belle and Mulan. I played with Barbies, etc. But I also loved video games and Hot Wheels. So I'd say I'd have a balance of both heteronormative genders. <laughs> I remember that my childhood bedroom, the one I had from when I was, I'd say, 6 to 12, was painted green and had a blend of feminine and masculine furniture and decorations. I mean, I had like a princess canopy bed-ish and fairy tale-like dressers and a shelf. <laughs> But I also had a denim ch rocking chair <laughs> and covered my walls eventually with just random shit I liked, like The Simpsons and maybe Fairly Odd Parents, I do not remember. And almost all of my birthdays were surprisingly unisex. I believe the only two birthdays I had that were single gender were my 7th and 10th birthdays. Those were all girls because they were both sleepovers. And I would invite like three or four of my closest friends and we'd just chill out, have a slumber party. Although I, am, I remember only one of the girls I invited for my 7th birthday actually staying the whole time because one of the girls had an overprotective mother who didn't want daughter to be spending the night even though we only live like a few doors down from her. And the other one got scared and had to be picked up by her mother. Why do I remember this? But I never particularly questioned my gender at the time. I was confident I was a girl and that I'd do, you know, girl things during puberty. Try out for the cheerleading team. Get a super cool jock boyfriend. High school musical, baby! But in fifth grade, I changed a lot. I became more boyish, wearing uniform khaki pants. Partly because my school did indeed have a uniform, but <laughs> that's beside the case. And putting my hair over my face because I thought it looked good at the time. Though, to be fair, I did get that inspiration from a Girl's Life magazine because I saw all these, like, 
gorgeous ladies with their fringe all out. And I used to pin it back and I thought, oh my God, that would look so sexy on me. It did not at all <laughs> because I have thin ass hair. And I also got more into video games, particularly Kingdom Hearts, as anyone who has been a very long fan of me would know. This defeminization peaked in middle school. I didn't wear any makeup unless if you count baby lips, which I personally do not, wore khaki pants every day along with an untucked red or black polo uniform shirt, and I also looked like a goddamn femme cell every weekend. And even though I went to public school, most of the girls there were very, very feminine wearing skirts and rainbow loom bracelets and shit from Hollister as it was the style at the time. And to put things into perspective, I didn't buy anything from Hollister until I was 17. And even then it was only a dress. <laughs> My interests also differed. While I played video games, watched anime, pre-Nazi PewDiePie, very, very briefly, I must add, and Smosh, these girls were watching Tyler Oakley and Pretty Little Liars having slumber parties and dating. I put that in quotes because middle schoolers do not know the concept of love. If you're a middle schooler watching this, you are probably going to break up with your boyfriend and or girlfriend and or partner within like five weeks. I guarantee it. As a result, a number of boys asked me if I myself was male because of these diff- fuck. Because of these differences, a number of boys asked me if I indeed was a male. And because I sound like a 35 year old woman. <laughs> and I was quite offended. I mean, yes, I have a vagina. So yes, I'm indeed a girl. And honestly, it wasn't just children who that I was a boy. <laughs> I distinctly remember on the second day of eighth grade, I raised my hand to answer a question in my IPC class and the teacher addressed me as sir, as sir. And I was so befuddled that I just couldn't, I didn't have the heart to correct her. So I was just like, um, and then gave my answer. And a couple days later, one of the boys in my middle school, in my class, asked, Julia, why didn't you correct that teacher? Are you actually a dude? It's like, you've known me for two years. You should know I'm a girl. <laughs> Although that was only the second most damaging rumor for me in middle school. We'll get to the first one in another video. And in middle school, I still occasionally wore dresses. I actually became a topic of shock and awe once I gained a boyfriend of my very own in eighth grade. You may know him. I've talked about him in this channel before. His name was Aaron. He's not relevant to the story right now. So that's all I'll say. I mean, middle school was hell for me for multiple, multiple reasons, but looking like a femme cell every day of my life certainly did not help with the whole popularity thing. I also thought I was holier than thou in regards to the girls in my middle school. I thought they were all preppy bitches because they watched Tyler Oakley and was Shane Dawson not edgy by then? I don't remember because I think, no, I think Shane Dawson was edgy by then because I watched edgy St. Shane Dawson. Anyway, I thought they were all clones of one another and that I was the one true independent woman, <laughs> which, is very arrogant. Do not do that. For the love of God, do not do that. <laughs> You're going to make no friends. I still dressed like a femme cell in my early teens, but starting in high school, I gained a more feminine touch. I still wore ironic meme t-shirts and jeans, but after my first breakup, I started wearing lipstick for the first time and I grew more inclined to wear dresses. Mascara soon followed, as well as ordering knockoff 50s dresses. <laughs> I cut my hair into a bob, though I still didn't know much about applying makeup. Like, for example, I didn't know that 
when you had dark lipstick on, you were supposed to make your eyes dramatic or it would look weird. I didn't know that you were supposed to use foundation until like before my senior year. <laughs> Ah, I was such a lost cause back in the day. Then in 2016, as I dyed my hair for the first time, I discovered eyeliner, particularly liquid eyeliner, which I soon found out that I was allergic to. How did I figure this out? Well, upon applying liquid eyeliner to my innocent little lids, I felt like I was burning and itching, which is not what makeup is supposed to feel like. If your face feels like it's burning after putting some makeup on, you're allergic to it. Take it off. But still, I wore tie-dye t-shirts and flannels a lot in high school. This was before I started to go full on in the post-goth look. <laughs> and I considered myself to have blossomed my senior year. I finally learned how to look hashtag blessed and found my forte in fashion. Black and band tees. Skinny jeans, Converse, Doc Martens, and some hats. I was on top of the world, but I never really questioned my gender. I mean, I briefly thought about it my sophomore year of high school, thinking, what if I'm not exactly a woman? But I didn't really go through a whole questioning phase until... It wasn't until last year when I started realizing that I'm not particularly comfortable with being referred to as a woman. I switched over to emo-esque makeup and eschewed dresses again, and I mean, I know part of this was a trauma response after my abusive relationship ended, but part of it was just me kind of realizing what I am and am not comfortable with but I repressed my confusion for a while. As I still felt comfortable going to the girls' restroom and doing feminine things, and I was scared because I, I had read about people saying like, oh, you're not really trans or non-binary because you just think it's a whole look. And I was worried, like, what if I'm just a more boyish girl? What if I'm just a tomboy? Am I overthinking my gender? What if I'm just a normal girl? But I soon realized that my gender identity doesn't correlate to my interests. I may look rather feminine. I may look more masculine at times, but I don't, you know, feel like a woman. Hell, I guess I desire the look of an effeminate twink. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was offensive. With my blessed shoulder length hair, of course, that I actually cut last night. So that's why it looks a little weird. Like nothing most of the time. Most of the time I feel like nothing. I really don't think of myself as male or female. I feel like shit most of the time, but I guess that's how it feels for me to be non-binary. I'm not confused or sick. I'm just a human being who doesn't feel like a boy or a girl. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with however gender you feel. You might not think you're any gender or your gender identity might fluctuate over periods of time and that's perfectly okay. There is an extensive amount of history on third genders and non-binary identities. And it's okay. It's okay to not realize until later in life that you're one thing instead of another. The human journey is unique for all of us. And the human journey is unique for all of us. And if you're questioning anything right now, you're good. You don't have to like pick and choose an identity. It took me months before I realized that I was non-binary. And I know for other people it may take years and that's okay. It's all okay. It's going to be okay.